everyone. Welcome to the Covered Chipboard. I'm Terry, and today starts our um, the beginning of the build for the Magic Shop, our first project in the 2024 craft along series. I hope you were all able to get your kits, but if you weren't, don't worry about it. I'm kind of setting this up so that you can work at your own pace. There'll be posts on the blog, which are kind of step-by-step, and then these videos that will go with them, and they kind of mirror each other. So you you can just work at your own pace and there won't be any problem. So this is the kit we're doing. It's called the Magic Shop. You can get it on Amazon. I keep calling, or I think it's called the Magic House, but I keep calling it the Magic Shop, whatever. Uh, and, um, I think it's pretty close to half scale, which is 124. Um, it's close enough that if you wanted to add other items that you have around your house or um, that you want to purchase online, you could use half scale, and I think it would work just fine. So I'm going to set this aside. We've got some uh, extra supplies that I'm using. As you can see, I've already started here but I'm using a craft knife, a little tool, pick tool, because I'm using um, score tape to attach the papers to the walls instead of glue. You can use whichever, either one is fine. I have a black Sharpie pen, and then I have a brown uh, alcohol ink marker, scissors, and a ruler. And if you have any of these Oh, I have to reach real far to get these. One, two, three blocks. Those will come in handy for holding your wall straight when you start gluing them. So we'll be using those. If not, you can find like a, a stack of books or a box, anything that will, you can lean against the wall to help hold it straight while the glue dries. And then the glue I'm using, I don't know about the glue that came in the kit. Um... I'm assuming it's a fast dry, but it's probably a clear. So I don't know. I think we'll hold off using this until maybe we get to some of the little fiddly metal bits and we'll see. I also have some E6000 glue that I might use instead of this. It, it just depends. We'll wait and see when we get there. But as far as gluing the pieces, I'm using this Eileen's Quick Dry Tacky Glue. So I'm going to put in the video there will be a link to the blog post where all of the posts for the project will be made, as well as a link to my supply list, which is in my blog shop. It's all at Amazon, and um, if you use those links from the blog shop, they'll take you right to Amazon to purchase. So, I went through, I think to start, you, it's best, if, especially if you're beginners. I kind of set this series up for a beginner. I, send, I tend to get a lot of beginner questions um, from my viewers. So I thought this would be a good way to um, get a beginner or someone who wants to just get started in miniatures to start with a ready-made project like this. Um, we're going to do some different things to it. And um, so you'll learn some, a few techniques along the way. And then work our way with the other projects up to other kits and um, creating a project from scratch as well. With this one, um, the top of it, once we get this part done, the, the complete shop done, the second part of the craft series is going to be in May, uh, May 1st, and we're going to add another structure to the top of this to make it taller. So, well, you know, I, I figured the little shopkeeper needs a house to live in. So, we're going to add a little house for her up top. Um, but more about that later. But just kind of browse through the instructions. Um, translation. Um, this kit comes from China. And translation is not, what, not always uh, what we would like. So, some of it you kind of have to look at it and go, what are they talking about? And... Um, but it's kind of funny, too. You'll get a little laugh out of it sometimes. But we're going to start on page 12, which is the appearance assembly. And this is putting all the walls together. I'm going to build the main structure first and then go to all the other parts later on. 
So what I've done is I've attached all of my papers to these two side walls, the back wall, and the flooring. I have not attached, there's a paper to go on the back here, and I've not attached that yet because I'm planning to do something a little different back here. So we're not going to worry about that right now. Um, but to me, I mean, this paper is really nice. It's got nice um, images on it. They're well well made, but it's just a bit shiny and a bit um, too pristine for me. So I have gone in and aged them. And this is what I've already finished the two windows here, the side, side walls, um, using some Distress ink, black soot, Ranger Tim Holtz black soot and um, ink. And I've kind of, <clears throat> excuse me, inked it up to make it a little more aged looking. And when you do that, because this paper is slick, it's not going to fully dry and it will rub off on your hands. So I have also sprayed sealed it once I've let it set for a few hours and then I went in and spray sealed it using this Krylon matte finish spray. Um, if you get this on Amazon, I think it's uh, a bit more costly than if you buy it like at Lowe's or even Michael's, I think, or someplace like that, Hobby Lobby. But one can of it will last you a long time. I've had this can for over a year, and I use it all the time. But so you'll want to spray seal these to, um, <clears throat> to seal them so that it won't rub off. So that's kind of where I, I stopped last night so that I kind of knew, had an idea of what to tell you. So right now we're going to go ahead and age this back wall and the flooring. And when I put this flooring on, I wasn't real thrilled with the side. There was little pieces that folded over and I really didn't particularly like them. So I cut mine off. You can use them if you want it's up to you. But for these edges, that's where we're going to use this alcohol ink marker and just ink up the edges for this. And you will probably, well, you'll need to spray seal it anyway, but so we'll start with this floor. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm trying to think if there were more, some more tips. Let me look here. Um, the blog post all, also has all of my little links to the supplies I'm using. Uh, let's see here. Oh, the flooring, which is, or not the flooring, the, um, this is the base. And from the width of it, I'm guessing that this base is going to butt up next to like this. Um, I want to do something different here. I, I'm not real thrilled with the way this looks. If you want to use it, that's fine. It, it's totally personal preference. Um, so, but I'm not going to use this and we'll get to this later on. Uh, I think we can go ahead and build. It looks like we can build the whole structure first and then come back to the base at last. But I think I'm going to do an egg carton cobblestone on this base. Like I said, we'll get to that later. So <clears throat> if you want to do follow along and do what I'm going to do, then just put this aside till later. I think that was it. Oh, one more thing. Let me find it. For the back of the, the outside back wall, I'm going to do uh, bricks in a different way. And this is an embossing folder. I don't remember who makes it, but I got it off of Amazon. You can still get it off of Amazon. I have it linked in the blog post. And we're going to use this to make uh, a more dimensional brick on the outside. <clears throat> now, it's up to you. It depends on where you're going to place this. If you're going to place it somewhere where the back can be seen, then this would be a fun idea to do. If you're not going to see the back, then it's a lot of effort for no real reason, and you can go ahead and just put this on. Uh, the paper that comes for the back, which is this piece right here. So again, that's a personal preference thing. It's totally up to you. And I may get so far and say, well, 
I've decided where I'm going to put this because I have no idea at this point, but where I'm going to put it, and I may wind up using this anyway. We'll just see when we get there. It's not important to do it at this stage. So to ink these up, you just get some ink on your pad, and then you just start adding spots here and there. And it takes, because the paper's shiny, it's going to take a little bit more than one coat. I'm going to put my glove on before I get ink all over my hand while I'm holding this, too. It's kind of a good idea to have these little gloves handy. That way you're not washing your hands, because this ink does come off on them. So you can see I'm just kind of doing a splotch like that. And I'm not going to do a ton of it on the floor. But I do want a couple of dark areas here. I would try to stay off of this little gray line here at the back because that's where our walls are going to glue. So, there we go. That just gives us some, I mean, so it's not so pristine. I don't think a shop like this would, would ever be that, that clean. We'll set that piece aside and go on to our other wall here. And I do do the edges and around the bottom. I don't think a lot of this shows. I'm looking at the, let's see the box. Yeah, if you look here on the inside, there's not a ton. It's mostly on this outside and at the very top. So down there at the bottom, not a lot of the wall shows, so we're going to concentrate on the side and up near the top here. And you can just keep adding this depending on how much you want to age it. think that's about as much as I'm going to do. Now, it will lighten a little bit as it sinks into the paper. So, like, again, you may need more than one coat. These black lines here, I believe, is where a piece of furniture goes. I'm pretty sure that biggest cabinet fits in here, and that's just kind of a marker. Um, these are also pieces that will be uh, and the little fiddly kit parts that will be added here, and these are just markers showing you where they go. So I think that's good. I think I like that. So I'm going to leave this to dry for just a few minutes, um, and then I'll come back. I'm going to go ahead and ink the edges of this or color them with this marker. And you could use uh, black or you could use, oops, wrong end. You could use black or you could use uh, brown, whichever you want. Let's see. These are not going to show back. The only thing that's going to show on this is this front area. Oops. You could use paint, you could use, it doesn't have to be an alcohol ink marker, it could be any kind of a brown or black marker. I like this color though because it, I think it goes well with the brick and the flooring.
has kind of a reddish tint to it. And it is color number um, 96 mahogany, which does have mahogany, does have red in it. So there's that. Uh, the black Sharpie, when you cut these side pieces out or punch them out, there'll be white edges down here on the inside. So I just took the black Sharpie and went around the edges just so that you didn't see any white paper showing. So any place that we're going to use these kind of pieces, the papers from the kit, and you're going to attach them to something, you might want to check and see, see how much inks come off while you're holding it. Um, and make sure that you do color these edges. Now, I didn't do it on this piece because that's not going to show. Okay, so that's it, I believe. So I'm going to stop and go, or pause, and I'm going to go spray these. And when I come back, then we'll glue them together. And, um, oh, wait, I think we have to do the inside of these windows first. Probably would be best. Yes, we'll do these window insides and then um, while these are drying from being sprayed. So let me pause here for a second and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. I've spray sealed these and I really, I don't know if you can tell, but when you use that matte spray, it's now taken the sheen off, the shiny sheen off of this and I think it looks so much nicer. Um, so I think the next step, we need to fix these windows. And from what I can see on the windows, on the outside, they've got trim, this black trim that goes on the outside, but they didn't do any for the inside. Uh, so I need to tell you about that too. Um, I may wind up using some balsa wood and making the trim to go around the inside, but that can be added later. When you put these paper things on, I notice that they're not always exactly even, or if you get off a little bit when you put it on. So if that happens, you wanna make sure, like on here, the paper is extending beyond the um, wood piece. So, when you go to glue that, that's gonna affect how it glues. So I wanna cut that off, and I'm just gonna use a craft knife and go along the edge, leaning up against the wood, and cut that, trim that little piece off. There we go. I think I got it pretty good. Let's try this again. Might be a little bit left still, yeah. You wanna get it as close to that wood as you can I trimmed up the other one, and then I forgot to trim this one. Okay, so I think that one's good. This one appears to be good. There might be a little piece right there. So just make sure that's all trimmed up really well, right up next to the wood. Okay, so according to the instructions, we need to use parts... B26 and B27, which are these right in here. Now, these pieces are not loose. There's little burrs holding them on there. So, you have to kind of find where the burrs are and then use your craft knife to cut them at that burr. And be careful. You don't want to bend these little fiddly parts. Yeah, there, it looks like it's just at the top and the bottom. So we're gonna cut those out. So there's one part. And there's the second part. I don't think they're not attached on the sides. It's just the top and the bottom. And they're just tiny little burrs. And when you take these out of here, you need to check and see if there's burrs at the left on the ends of where they were attached. And if they are, you need to use a little um, emery board and just kind of file it down till that burr is gone. 
I mean, feel there's no bar there left. That way things should fit just fine. Okay, so we have a short one, which will go here, and a tall one, which will go here. So you need to test those and make sure they're going to fit well. And it looks like they're a little bit long. So I'm going to sand this a little bit more. Just be careful and don't sand it too much and then it won't fit. Let's see if that works. Yeah, it was just that little bit. So you want them to be snug, but not uh, so snug that they warp or try to bend when you put them in. Okay, that one's good. This one's good. We're going to glue them from the back, and you want to glue on all these the ends of these points. So I'm just going to do a little and if you have toothpicks around sometimes those are good for picking up bits of the glue. This glue does dry clear. And I'm not using tons here. Just like a little dot. Oops. Okay, now we're going to take this and pop it in here. Wipe off the excess. Make sure that's in there good. There we go. So there's one. I'll leave that to dry that way. Here's the second one. There we go. And I like I said, this glue dries clear, so if you get it on there, I wouldn't worry about it. Okay, so now those two are done. And let's go ahead and glue this down. And if you want, you can always use a combination of hot glue and this glue. Put like hot glue here on both ends and maybe one little dot in the center. Same thing on here. And that's like a quick grab to hold it. So we're going to follow the gray lines here. Make sure we're at the back. And then I'm going to use my one, two, three block. To hold this against the back. Make sure we've got that straight. I think I'll just put both of these on the back. So you know that if it's pressed up against these blocks, it's straight. And it should be flush with the back. Whoops, that one it's flipped it forward on me. And we're gonna leave that and let it dry. These pieces, on this piece, which is which goes on the left side, there's a grate that goes in here. I guess we should probably put the grate in there first. And that grate piece is B34, 
which is right here. So let's take that out. See if I can move this over. Those one, two, three blocks, you can get them on Amazon. They're really, really good to have. I'm trying to see where the... Okay, it looks like just on the ends here, or on the sides. There we go. And there's a little piece sticking out over here. You also need to watch when you do this. Um, like this is gonna have to, that had to be sanded, but it's taken the paint off. So I want to use my, a black marker or some black paint and touch that up. Easy peasy fix. And then this piece gets glued right on top here, just like that. Okay, so one of the things I want to mention is when you put your grids into the windows, you want to put them in from the inside. You can see I glued mine and then realized I hadn't done this. Um, and push them all the way flat on the table so that they're at the front of the back side. And they did not include, from what I can see, any kind of acrylic to go in the windows. So we're gonna make our own. Now I'm using some thin sheets of acrylic that I got off of Amazon. I was going to put a link, but I cannot find um, this particular one that I bought. It's really flimsy and thin. You could also use any kind of, if you have plastic from bakery containers or packaging of any kind, you could also use that. So I'm going to cut these to fit on the inside. So I'm going to kind of poke it down in here and I'm gonna use my Sharpie uh, to make a mark, but I'm gonna make the mark where the little black parts are so that if it happens to show and then I'm going to line it up here and mark it down here. So if I see it, it'll be behind these, uh, the black bars, and you shouldn't see it that well. And now we'll fit this down in here. Right like that. that protective covering off. So now, and I'm kind of curious to see how these, um, oh, you know when you get pastries? Save your pastry things. They're really good for holding little bits and bobs when you're working on these. Let me scoot this further over here where you can see it. So these pieces go here and they kind of glue to the edge but not completely. So probably best to put your glue along the edge of this. I'm just going to put a bead of glue right down here. I wouldn't go in too far. And then 
here on the bottom. And so this one's going to fit right like this and up against that. Okay, so same thing on this. It doesn't have a top or a bottom. Um, I've inked mine really heavy here where it would naturally be underneath the window. So I'm going to go ahead and assume that's the bottom. <clears throat> and there we go. Let's try, try to keep these even out here. So there is our first part of our structure. So I would let this dry before you go much further. I think our next step would be um, page 13, and that would be gluing the, we've already, we're not gonna do the outside floor and we are the cobblestone. And we've already done this part. So then our next one would be the green windows. And those are going to be kind of tedious. But, um, so I'm going to take a break and stop here. And the next video will be uh, doing these bay window things here. So that's it for right now. And I'll see you on the next video. Mm -hmm.